Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the Introduction to Cryptography, Part 1. Today we're going to be starting with cryptographic services, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on encryption basics. There's a fair amount of information, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing cryptographic services. Cryptography is the process of deriving a code value from a set of data. An example of this is taking a clear text message and creating a cipher text message. That is a message that can't be easily read. Cryptography is also the process of decoding the cipher text message to obtain the clear text message. So the reverse process is also part of cryptography. Cryptography offers three basic services, encryption, hashing, and authentication. It's time to begin a discussion on encryption services. This is the process of taking a clear text message or set of data and scrambling it through the use of a cipher. That's an algorithmic process. Encryption services are used to secure messages and data sets against theft or loss, including its interception while the data is in transit. There are different types and methods of encryption that can be used. Hashing is the process of taking a set of data and using an algorithmic process to generate a value that only the original data value can generate. This generated value is known as the hashed value or message digest. The hashed value is generated and is appended or added to the data and it is used to ensure the integrity of the data. If the data with the hashed value is sent to another party, that party can use the same hashing algorithm on the data and compare the two hashed values. If the two hashed values match, the integrity is ensured. Cryptography is also used for authentication services. Authentication is a cryptographic method used to prove that the creators of messages are in fact who they say they are. Authentication is used for non-repudiation purposes. The person sending the message, once authenticated, cannot claim that the message did not come from him or her. This authentication usually is achieved through the use of digital signatures. It's time to discuss encryption basics. Encryption algorithms work by using a key to scramble the data or message so that if the data is intercepted, it can't be easily read. To unscramble the data, the process is reversed. Encryption algorithms are either symmetrical or asymmetrical in nature. With symmetrical encryption algorithms, both sides of the communication use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the data. With asymmetrical encryption algorithms, one key is used to encrypt the data and a different key is used to decrypt the data. The key that encrypts the data cannot be used to decrypt it. Asymmetrical encryption is much more secure, but it also requires more management and computing resources. Often, asymmetrical cryptography is used to establish a symmetrical encryption method. Encryption requires the exchange of security keys. In order for encryption to function between different entities, the proper security keys must be used, as in the keys must be exchanged between the communicating parties. The key exchange may occur in band, as in part of the actual communication session, or the key exchange may occur out of band, outside of the data communication channel. For example, sharing the encryption key over the phone and then sending encrypted data over the internet. There are several different types of security keys, and they can be further broken out by the type of encryption that's used. There are symmetrical encryption key types. There is the pre-shared key, or PSK. The encryption key is shared before the communication session starts, usually through an out-of-band key exchange. A PSK can also be called a secret key or a private key. Then there are session keys. This is a random key that is generated during the communication session, and it's a type of in-band key exchange. Then there is the asymmetrical encryption key type. The most common method uses a public key and a private key system, 
referred to as a public key infrastructure or PKI to manage the different security keys. And in most cases, PKI is implemented through an in-band key exchange. There are also different types of encryption methods. Some encryption algorithms are a stream cipher algorithm. The encryption occurs one bit at a time. The encryption process is fast, and if an error occurs, it will usually only affect a single bit. Then there are block cipher algorithms. The encryption takes place on predetermined blocks of data, as in at 64 bits of data at a time, or on 128 bits of data at a time. The encryption process is slower and more error prone, but is considered to be more secure than the stream cipher type. There is steganography. This is the process of encoding or concealing data within a graphic file. The person receiving the graphic file must use steganography software to read the secured data. Steganography can be used to place an encoded message on a graphic image on a website that the recipient can then retrieve and decode. Transportation encryption may be required. It may be vital that certain information flowing across public networks, as in the internet, be kept secure during the transportation process. It may also be wise to provide security when using communication channels on a private network. Some specific protocols have been developed to help secure transportation communication channels. HTTPS is one of them. That is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. It's used to encrypt communication between a web server and a client. HTTPS will utilize either SSL or TLS to provide the encryption. So let's talk about SSL and TLS. That is Secure Socket Layer and Transportation Layer Security. These are used to encrypt communications channels, usually at the transportation layer or layer 4 of the Open System Interconnection Model or OSI model. Of the two, TLS is more secure than SSL. Then there's SMIME, that's Secure Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension. It's used to encrypt email messages between parties. And finally, there's IPSEC, Internet Protocol Security. It's actually a suite of protocols that are used to authenticate users and encrypt the communication channel. That concludes this session on the Introduction to Cryptography, Part 1. We began by talking about cryptographic services, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on encryption basics. On behalf of Peace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.